This is AEDT 1160U, Digital Communication Technologies. The title of this video clip is Informal and Incidental Learning. Oops, I just learned something. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. What is incidental learning? What is informal learning? How does incidental learning happen in social media? What triggers it? When Ricardo followed Vicky's advice and created his LinkedIn profile, his objective was to become visible to recruiters who were hunting for candidates with a plumbing background. He had tried to send his application the traditional way, that is, sending his CV and a cover letter to all the businesses in the GTA that he could find in the phone book, but he never received any call back. As he started creating his LinkedIn profile, he was prompted to connect with people sharing similar professional backgrounds from all corners of the world. Ricardo went through several of these profiles and noticed many similarities between highly connected individuals. First, individuals with more elaborate descriptions of their experiences and current positions had more connections than individuals with brief profiles. Second, most of the profiles with more than 500 connections used obvious keywords repetitively in the description of their different positions and also in their profile summaries. Third, many of these individuals posted impressive and attractive recommendations written by their past employers, their past and present colleagues and their clients. Fourth, people who posted many updates shared articles, and commented on others had a lot of traffic on their profiles. Many people liked their posts and commented on them. Fifth, Ricardo noticed that people with well-connected profiles were following many groups discussing different aspects of the plumbing practice. Of course, Ricardo was curious to know what these groups were all about, so he started exploring them. Some of these groups required permission to join, others were open to the public. There were groups discussing everyday issues relating to plumbing, groups talking about innovative plumbing techniques and products, groups debating on plumbing qualifications in different areas of the world, and many more. These groups included professional plumbers, plumbing trainers, house owners passionate about fixing everything in their house themselves, plumbers seeking contracts, headhunters for plumbing companies, and more. Ricardo decided to join several of these groups and started getting in contact with some of their members. He received notifications whenever these groups posted updates, shared articles, or started discussions. He slowly started to learn about the plumbing practice in Canada, the qualifications he needed, the type of contracts that were offered, the companies that recruited the most plumbers, etc. These groups were actively constructing a rich web bank of shared knowledge, seamlessly accessible by all, containing wealthy information, valuable skills, and inspiring experiences. This phenomenon is more clearly explained by the figure we are showing on the screen. According to this figure, whenever their interest was triggered by a new unfamiliar information or unusual situation, they reached out for more explanation through searching the web and through sharing the details with other members of the group who shared, in return, their piece of information with the rest of the group in order to form a clear understanding of the concept that was being dealt with. Through these interactions, constructing the group's knowledge was leading to learning for each of its members. They all received their specific missing parts of the puzzle that were preventing them from seeing the whole picture. The synthesis questions for this video clip were as follows. What kind of information did Ricardo have access to by getting a profile on a professional social networking site? How could Ricardo use this information to become visible to recruiters and to find a job?